can't beat that. It was a big stage for both of us. Coming from a small school, playing a big powerhouse out of the Big Ten, and I guess it just got everybody's imagination riled up. We had a, a college basketball game that felt like a heavyweight championship fight. We mirrored each other. This guy could shoot 30 feet out, as well as his will to win and his toughness is what really impressed me as well. I enjoyed every time I played against Magic. To come out the, the winner was everything that I wanted because I couldn't stand for Indiana State and Larry Bird to, to win that game. It broke my heart that I wasn't able to bring back a championship to the city of Terre Haute and the Indiana State Sycamore because I put so much into that. This is why we love sports. Today is the 41st anniversary of the birth of one of the greatest rivalries in sports history. Irvin Magic Johnson led Michigan State to a 75-64 win over Larry Bird in Indiana State. It still remains the highest rated game in NCAA tournament history. Absolutely unreal. On that note, we welcome in former Michigan State Spartan Hall of Famer, friend of the show, Magic Johnson, Magic, always great to have you with us. Thank you so much for the time and hope you and your family are well. I want to get right into it. Tell me, what is the, your fondest memory of leading your team to that historic win? Well, Molly, um, you know, for, first of all, thank you guys for working. And all of us are at home. And uh, I know you're working from home, but you're still working. And uh, God bless you guys and your families. And also, God bless America, too. But what I remember, Molly, um, was here this guy is uh, named Larry Bird, who had led his team to an undefeated season, 33-0. and He was dominating college basketball. Um, and he was... In the beginning, he was relatively unknown, right? And the school was unknown. But as the season progressed, everybody was like, wow, this guy named Larry Bird, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. And at that time, Sports Illustrated, it was it was big time, you know. And so as the season progressed, we, as Michigan State, we were not playing. We didn't start off well, you know, and uh, we were 4-4 four and four in the Big Ten. But then we got hot. We won like 10, 11 games in a row and leading into the tournament. And then we were playing our best basketball, and <clears throat> you could see that the college basketball fan and the TV network was hoping that Indiana State with Larry Bird would meet Michigan State with Magic Johnson, and that's exactly what happened. We got to the semifinal. We beat Penn. They beat DePaul, and I thought DePaul, which was led by Mark Aguirre, I thought – they may be Indiana State because, to me, they had a little bit more talent. But Larry Bird had 36 points that game, and it it was like, uh-oh, we got to watch out for this guy on Monday night. And sure enough, uh, we felt that we had more talent. With Greg Kelser, who was, uh, I think he got drafted number five by Seattle that year, uh, was on our team, and then we had Jay Vincent, too, another NBA player. We felt that we had more talent than them and that we, we, we could beat them, but we were scared to death because Larry Bird um, <clears throat> is, was an awesome basketball player. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, we ended up winning the game, and we didn't know. I don't think Larry Bird or myself knew that it would be that big, but because he was named College Player of the Year, I came in second. And I think everybody got a chance to say, for the first time, the best two teams are in the uh, NCAA Finals and the best two players are going up against each other. Magic Johnson, why do you think, when we consider the fact that it did a 24.1 rating, still the highest to this day in NCAA history, why do you believe uh, that game between you two was so huge compared to anything else we've seen thereafter. Remember, we've seen Ewing against Jordan. We've seen Ewing against Olajuwon for the national championship. Right. We've seen UNLV versus Duke, etc. Why do you believe you against Larry Bird to this day was the biggest at the, the biggest in history? Well, Stephen A., I think because we were two big players in terms of 6'9", we would do anything to win. Our game was so versatile in terms of we could dribble, pass, shoot. Um, so we were playing the game the right way, and I don't, I don't think people, the the college basketball fan, had, hadn't seen two players like ourselves uh, who could play the game the way we could play the game. And then at the end of the day, 
uh, Larry Bird being white, me being black, I think it, it captivated everybody's imagination of, okay, let's see, you know, who's going to win this game and um, who also we were entertainers too at the same time because of our passing ability, no-look passes. And I think that all those factors played into it. And, um, man, we didn't disappoint all the way from the first game in the NCAA tournament to the championship game, all the hype that we had behind us, we never disappointed the college basketball fan. Magic, uh, my answer to that would be a lot of what you said is true, but the short version is you two were basketball geniuses. There's a difference between seeing two top players go against each other. Hakeem was amazing. I'm a huge Patrick Ewing fan. Or even like if you saw today, if you saw the Greek freak against Kawhi, those are great competitors, great athletes. But watching you and Larry Bird, you were watching two basketball geniuses. It was obvious the decision-making, the, the kind of otherworldly effect you guys had on the game. When you looked at him, as they say, game recognized game, real recognized real, you said we were scared to death because of this guy, Larry Bird. What was it about him playing against him that was so scary? Because I think you're right, Max. We mirrored each other. That's what was scary about it. You know what my coach decided to do? This is it's never happened uh, ever in my my basketball life. So on that Sunday, so we both won on Saturday. We had Sunday to practice because then the game was on Monday. So we get to Utah at the at the gym, and he says to me, he says, Irvin. We don't have nobody on the second five on the scout team that could play Larry Bird. So we're going to have you play Larry Bird so that we can get used to how Larry Bird plays. So I said, okay, cool. You know, I, 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 it was like a compliment. And so you're not going to believe that Stephen A., Max, Molly, I was shooting the lights out. That practice, right? <laughs> I was shooting like Larry Bird, and everything I threw up there was going in. So about 20 minutes into the practice, he said, "Time out, time out, Coach." He coach said, "Time out, Irvin, can you play like that tomorrow night?" <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that I helped us get ready because he put me on the scout team to be Larry Bird, so we could adjust our zone. And, um, but the, I would say this, one thing great about labor, we are mirrors of each other. We played the same way. We thought the game, we were students of the game. We would do anything to win. And, um, we've been linked to each other since 1979, since that game. And, uh, now we're great friends because we used to dislike each other because, uh, of him being with the Celtics, me being with the Lakers. And so I'm just glad today we can say, hey, we're friends, and um, that he knows me as Irvin and I know him as Larry. Magic, as you reflect on you and Larry Bird as college basketball players, obviously that was more than 40 years ago. As you reflect on what you two brought to the game of college basketball, have you seen anybody on the collegiate level during their collegiate careers that either of you have considered better than you guys? Um, you know, I, I think that, <laughs> listen, I've was I just been following, uh, thank you for, to CBS for playing all the games over again, right? So I just was watching Ewing and, and Sleepy Floyd against uh, Michael, yep. Jordan, Sam Perkins, James Worthy, and I'm sitting in the sitting there like, wow, look at this talent that's on the basketball court. This is crazy, and the game was unbelievable, right? So I can say, hey, they're just as talented. Then I can say, I watch Akeem and him and Clyde Drexler. <laughs> you know, I'm watching this team, Houston, yeah, and. I can keep going. I'm watching all these reruns of these championship games or just NCAA games, and I'm saying, wow, all these teams, all these guys were just as talented. And so one thing I love about March Madness is it, it brings out the best. You're going to see the best of every great player, right? And that's what makes you great is that big stage, that big moment for you to shine and you to show the, the world 
how great you are. So Larry Bird and I knew what we had to do. He knew what he had to do for Indiana State. I knew what I had to do for Michigan State. And I think we put the madness in March. I think we started the the madness of March Madness, right? And then these other guys just took it and ran with it uh, when it was their turn. And so I wouldn't say we were more talented. We just did what we had to do, and we both came – into the NBA and changed the NBA. Um, my first year, remember the championship against Philly, we were on tape delayed, you know, and so yep. it, wasn't mm-hmm. the, it wasn't even live. And so, um, and then I thought we changed that whole league in the NBA because we brought in a yeah. different style. Both of us brought in a different style, and we both played for historic uh, teams and w- when him going with the Celtics and me being with the Lakers. No question. And it's still arguably the greatest rivalry in sports. I could listen to these stories all day, Magic. Magic isn't going anywhere. When we come back on First Take, we'll have much more with him, but we're going to dive into the association. We'll give you the latest on the NBA and get his thoughts on everything when the playoffs do resume. Plus, Should Dak Prescott continue to hold out? We have an update on the Cowboys and those negotiations. More First Take after this break. 